I gladly accept your hand in marriage. Twelve seconds later. After much prayer and deliberation, I've decided to grant your request to divorce your wife. On grounds of adultery. Is this, is this doing it for you? Is this doing it for anyone out there? To the cocky Vaughn. <laughs> oh, okay. Another one. Another one. And another one. Jack my! Jake my! Jake my! Here we are, Jake my! Whoa, 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 hold up. Hold up, that is good. <laughs> oh man, let me get the hair out. I have. So yes, as I was saying, I loved Crusader Kings 2. This game came out while I was still in California. I was very, very busy man. I had no time to do anything out there, especially video games. I'm going to be kind of learning this game with you, chat. I don't really know. This is a lot different than, not a lot different, but it's different than Crusader Kings 2. What's going to happen? So in this game, uh, we're the head of a dynasty, a medieval dynasty. The House of McBoy. So I renamed our province capital to Castle Boisfeld. We have the city of Boise, also renamed. <laughs> and then we have the bishopric of St. Baclogius. The motto of, of our clan is the virtues be three. Snack, sowed, and spice, obviously. Okay, so yeah, we need to make an error. We need to choose a lifestyle. I think we want to do diplomacy. And I think we want to do a family focus. Okay, so we are in the Kingdom of Scotland, right? We're a vassal of the King of Scotland, who's this guy, King Malcolm III. Essentially, our goal is that as a tiny little count controlling only this little territory here, we want to control more and more, rise up the ranks to become a duke eventually, and then possibly a king and possibly an emperor. And sometimes that might take generations to accomplish. So we want to fabricate a claim on this guy, our neighbor on him. Because he's neighboring us, we want to kind of, kind of try and take all of his stuff. Um, so our character is a decent military commander, actually. Oh, Vaughn here. I guess me. I am a decent military commander in this. I'm also a bastard. <laughs> um, which is actually true. In real life, I was born outside of wedlock. So I tried to pick traits that actually match me. Compassionate, ambitious, calm. I like to think I'm calm. A charismatic negotiator, a bastard, <laughs> and a confider, uh, as well as a flexible leader. Now we're off with it here. So here's the situation. England is going to get invaded by uh, William the Bastard, as well as the King of Norway. They're both going to attack England to try to take the throne. So there's going to be a bunch of chaos going on in England. Oh yeah, we can see it happening right now. Oh, lustful. That means we have a lot of kids. That could be good. Well, let's do it. This will be our wife. Eid Flayed. To the benevolent Vaughn. <laughs> to the benevolent Vaughn. I, Eid Flayed, gladly accept your hand in marriage. May Saint Bridget bless our union, my benign husband. With my marriage to her, the realm expects us to throw a suitably extravagant wedding celebration. It is well within my right to collect a royal aid duty as part of this, but some may consider it tasteless to levy an extra tax during such time of jubilation. All right, chat, our first decision. Uh, vote one if you think we should collect tax because it's our wedding and we told them, we told people to. Or put a two in chat if we're going to say, no, we don't need tax and look, you know, look a little bit stronger, a little bit wealthier than we actually are. No taxes. Need to look strong for Bay. Okay. <laughs> yes, indeed. And what all of this really means is that... Adventure awaits! 
to the cocky Vaughn. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. Calm down, Bishop. I have prowled through documents, both ancient and of less provenance. I have finally enough material to make the case that you are the rightful lord of Strathern. All that is missing is the one little bribe. Oh, that's more gold than we can afford. Let's just, uh, do it. So we have negative money. That's lovely. Hope you were doing well. Whoa, whoa. Oh, ho, ho, ho. it worked. Oh, that is great. That is great. Oh, he's playing at galactic levels. Oh, oh yes. <laughs> it's playtime. We did it. Fate smiles upon me. My wife, he had fled, is bearing my child. She doesn't look so jazzed. No, she really doesn't, does she? And then we'll get to finally name our first child, and our first child will be named after um, the Coach Heinz. So, oh, William the Conqueror won his war. He's now the King of England. Wow, my son and heir. We get to name our first child. Finally, our Heinz McBoy would be the name. <laughs> May you grow to be strong and wise, my son. Heinz McVon McBoy. We can have, whoa, holy gad, with a thousand bits. We reached it, a thousand bits. You crushed it, holy gad. Is this beautiful? Is this, is this doing it for you? Is this doing it for anyone out there? Here we are. Oh my god. We got another thousand bits. Holy. Well, as requested, we're gonna crack a cold one open with the boys. So this is, uh, Boylan. Black cherry. Mm-mm. Smells good. You crack yourself up. You at home, crack a cold one open too. It's, it's that time. Oh, that's good. Whoa, 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 hold up. Hold up, that is good. Hold, hold up. Okay, we, hold on, I gotta, I gotta have the right camera angle for this. So he was, he was like telling us how, how we're supposed to shoot, right? He was, he was a, an instructor, um, like a senior non-commissioned officer. Coach Hines was there. Okay, so this guy was telling us how to shoot, right? And he's like, he's telling us how to, how do you, how you're supposed to like, dig your cheek into the buttstock of the M16, right? And so he's, uh, he's telling, <laughs> oh, I haven't told this story in a while. So he would, he would tell us, <laughs> he would tell us, I want, I want to see your cheek, mate, coming over the top of the buttstock like this. I want to see. I want to see your your cheek mate getting pressed up by the butt stock of the gun, okay? And if it, if I if you're out there on the line, if you're out there on the firing line, and I, you hear me yell, cheek boy, then you know what I'm talking. <laughs> you know what I'm saying is you want to get your cheek mate down pressed into the gun. So make sure you. If, so if, I want you all to know if you hear me yelling, cheek boy, cheek boy. I want you. That's what that's what I'm talking about. I want you to see your cheek mate getting pressed up by the gun. That's, oh, uh, yes. I wanna, if, if you hear me on the back of the line, you hear me on Jack Boy! That's what's going on. So, yes, that's, uh, that's that story. There we go. Alright, we're back. It's one of our castles. I decided it would be a good occasion uh, to pass by to ensure I get some face time with him. The ball was exquisite, and he put on a fine show. I was told, I told him how impressed I was after we got to talking. Uh, by the time I left, it felt as though we had known each other a lifetime already. What a good day. More and more Sinead and you become friends. Hey, we have our first friend. Okay, so he's our friend now. Will he accept an alliance now? No. Damn it. <laughs> he still won't accept an alliance. My daughter! <laughs> Should we name her? We can name her, uh... Gadriel. I kind of like that. I like that, Breck. Holy Gad, what do you think? Gadriel McVon, McBoy. Beautiful. Beautiful names. Whoa, whoa, whoa. 
It was never a quiet moment. My son and heir, Heinz, is so full of questions. I do my best to encourage his curiosity, but sometimes I cannot help but get exhausted by the constant stream of thoughts and queries. When a father and mother love each other very much. Oh, he's going to gain the trait. Curious is indeed going to probably win this war. Thanks for following, though, man. Uh, Octoblock, just for you. I'm going to go do a few pull-ups. Another one. Another one. Another one. And another one. That's for you, Octorok. Crown, uncrown the boy. Ooh. We can do that. Beautiful. Now we are crowned once more. Oh, she's pregnant again. Oh, that's incredible. It's incredible. Nifty she's pregnant. stuff. It means more kids. As my eyes meet Queen Ingeborg's for the first or for what feels like the twentieth time tonight. I know I am not imagining things. Even from the other side of the table, her gaze feels as intense as the midday sun. She wants me. <laughs> what? And I cannot lie. I want her too. Or is punishing her husband, King Malcolm, <laughs> what I truly desire? Does it even matter? What? Okay, so we are falling for the Queen of Scotland. <laughs> Do we uh, give her a good tumble? Go and find her once everyone's asleep? Do we expose her, or do we remain pure? Chat, I will remind you we are married. Her breath ragged and eyes half closed. Languorously, I wipe the sweat off her chest with gentle fingers. What's he, what's he done here? Merely a moment later, she pushes my hand away with an apologetic smile. It's nearly morning. Oh, she's mad. She's mad. Wrong play, chat. I gotta wait till he's 16. Greetings, my impeccable liege. I've been hosting your Chancellor, Selene, for several weeks, and he helped me truly see the splendor of the realm under your rule. I am nothing less than honored to serve as your vassal. This guy is absolutely mainline. My daughter. She's here. This, yeah, I think this is a this is a bracky daughter. We could call her um Bracca. Bra Bracca? Bra 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 what do we want to call her? Bra Bra uh. Bracklin? Like Jacqueline? <laughs> Bracklin. I like it. Hmm. What? Norway conquered England. Okay, what if we got Malcolm? Married. Yeah, real. He will not accept it either. But will it be easier to befriend him? Yes. Okay. We're going to do it. Whoa. I've been searching and searching, but Duke Anolf and I seem to have nothing in common. Without any common ground, how do you even begin to have a friendship? Oops. Whoa, whoa, whoa. My dear friend, Sinead has caught wind of my desire to improve my standing with Duke Elf and offer me his aid. Okay. He assures me that he and Elf are similar kinds of people. He knows exactly what I need to do. Please do tell. And the scheme gains progress. Alright. After learning that Duke Elf would be guesting in a manner at the castle town, I realized it would be a perfect occasion to meet with him. By my request, I was seated next to him for the duration of dinner. We both had a great time. Uh, I was surprised at how much we had to talk about. By the time I left, it was as though we had already known each other a lifetime. Such a pleasant man. Are we friends now? We're friends. Okay. Now, will you let me arrange a marriage with you? He will accept! Oh, praise the Lord. He will not accept matrimonial. Okay, that's fine. To the benign Vaughn, I gladly accept your betrothal proposition. Your your daughter, Gadriel, will be betrothed to my son and heir, Malcolm. Signed, Duke Anolf. I don't know. I think we got to try and 
We gotta try to kill her. So we can get rid of this alliance. Because here's what I was thinking. This guy, his only ally... Is... Lothian. And that's through her. So if we took her out of the picture, he no longer has his ally. And then if my allies... If I have allies and my army, we should be able to take him out. And press the claim. So if we took her out... We could do that. against her. We could bear that stress. A cheery gathering. Guests are gathered in the Great Hall. Lords and ladies from near and far reaches the realm. The mood is bright. Spirits are high as the feast begins. Her. Feast a laudable effort. As the feast is underway and our guests are eating and drinking merrily, Mayor Forsbuck approaches Eadflaid and me at the great table. This is a marvelous feast. All of my compliments to the host. Yes, I have done a great job, haven't I? Or my wife deserves all. With everyone headed for their respective homes, I'm proud to say the feast was a great, was a success. I have my wife to thank. Okay, let's wait. Hold on. Let's uh, before we get, let's do a few things here. Let's go to him. Let's plot against her. Murder. Let's start this scheme. I am obliged to attend a local jousting tournament, but the contestants have been delayed. The tourney won't start for at least another hour. While I'm waiting under the pavilion, my du my friend Duke Anolf comes up to my table. Some tourney, eh? Anyway, how have you been? He becomes my best friend? Yeah, we should become best friends with him. Once again, his absence from our chambers as night falls. She's been distant lately, lost in thought and rarely seen at court. Am I not to her satisfaction? Is she simply busy? Could she be warming someone else's bed? Hmm. Confront her. Watch her. Or trust her. Hmm. My wife is with child. Oh no. We ignored it. I should be overjoyed. However, she's been acting strange and I cannot shake the feeling that something is wrong. I've always worried that her insatiable appetite was a general one and not just for me. Could the child belong to someone else. What's he, what's he done here? She must tell me. A sneaking suspicion. You understand, I never want to hurt you. Tears are streaming down her face. After a drawn out silence, she finally admits it. Mayor Forsbrock is the father of the child. The secret must stay between us. Everyone will know your infidelity. <gasps> it cannot be serious. Hey, no. That just happened. Oh, are you kidding me? Get out of here. What's he, what's he done After, here? He confronted us at the feast, too. You remember he walks up to our table? He was like, hey, I just want to tell you both, you both, that this feast is amazing. He made a point. He made a point to talk to both of us. Wow, what a what a scoundrel. All right, everyone will know of your infidelity. You've been overwhelmed by stress. Uh-oh, recently I feel I'm not worth, worthy to be count. What do other rulers, do other rulers doubt themselves as I doubt myself? I try to be a good, calm count, but every one of them, or every one of my courtiers seems determined to fry my nerves. Small cries dominate my days, or crises dominate my day. And I feel myself cracking in a way that others of my station never do. Damn this universe for raising one so poor as me to such heights. Yeah, I think we should do confide. Then as long as our stress is down, we should be okay. So let's, yeah, let's, let's do that then. Let's request a divorce from the old Pope. He will accept. Greetings, Vaughn. After much prayer and deliberation, I've decided to grant your request to divorce your wife on grounds of adultery. Spicy stuff. You know what adultery is? Oh, no way! That is completely offside. It's definitely offside streams here. But I think, folks, for tonight, we are probably going to call it here. Boom. There we are. Uh, with that said, let's uh, get right into it. Huh? Thank you everyone for hanging out tonight. We'll see you uh, hopefully tomorrow for Austin stream and then again on uh, 
Friday when I'm back. Take care, everybody. Single and ready to kingle. That's funny.